Hi there, and a very warm welcome to episode 7 of People Soup. It's Ross McIntosh here. This week's episode is called Flexibility in Work Relationships. Now let's be clear, this isn't a tale about a dodgy office party with too much lukewarm lambrusco and an ill-advised game of Naked Twister. This is about getting flexible in a tricky workplace relationship, and I'll introduce some practical techniques for changing that relationship. So in this episode, I'll be using examples from real life and some skills based in psychology and present them to you in a way that could enable you to go out and practice on a work connection that you would like to transform. We spend a lot of time at work. Our human connections at work are important and sometimes they don't work as well as they could, but we get into patterns with people. If you like, we get on autopilot in certain relationships and can only see the bad or annoying elements of a colleague. This can easily develop into the habit where we see everything they do through the lens of this person is annoying or this person is not very clever or let's be honest, this person is a pain in the arse. I'll also begin with some reviews of last week's episode and a highlight from my working week. To begin with, a few updates. I've had a couple of reviews on Twitter and LinkedIn about the last episode, which was all about getting unplugged from work. Jenny on LinkedIn said, I found this really useful. Definitely some good takeaways. Suzanne on Twitter said, do yourself a big favour and listen to this today. Only eight minutes of your time for some great tips on how to ensure you practice effective recovery. Thanks so much both. I'm really touched and appreciative of, of this feedback. I extended the conversation on Twitter with Teresa, Suzanne and Chris. This was about my concern that in some organisations people consider that state of always being on to be a badge of dedication or honour. Suzanne said she completely agreed. She said with long working hours and important decisions being made late in the day or late in the shift, it's so important to build team cultures that prioritise effective recovery. Chris also agreed and said that whilst he was working, it was something he used to challenge, but then found he wasn't switching off himself, which then led to him berating himself. And you can see that this is a, this is a kind of vicious circle that, that happens. One other update this week. Me and Paul, that is Dr. Paul Flaxman from City University of London, we were working in a prison, training a group of psychologists in our intervention for personal resilience. Their intention was to deliver this training to governors and prison officers. And it was really fascinating to hear about the context for these people. I really enjoy considering how our intervention could be adapted to suit different working populations. Anyway, down to business. We're looking at skills to transform a workplace relationship. In my own experience, and also speaking to many people in my capacity as a trainer and a coach, there are always relationships that could be improved at work. Usually there is someone at work that we find to be an irritant or a pain. If pushed, we might acknowledge that it could be useful to improve this relationship. And occasionally we might have a glimpse of a different way we could be, but we soon revert to putting them in a particular box and treating them in a particular way. So my invitation to you in this episode is why not explore that relationship a bit further? You could have a go at making some changes about how you are and see what happens. One illustration is from a group of teachers I was training a while back. One participant, let's call her Mary, had been working with her values, those qualities she wanted to express in a certain relationship. And she'd chosen the value of patience, which she'd like to try expressing in her relationship with her children. She felt that she was often snappy and short-tempered with them, and that's not who she wanted to be. She reported back the following week that she had a moment of pause, The children had done something to annoy her, and she was about to launch into an ill-tempered rant. But she noticed what she was about to do in real time, and she caught herself in flight, as it were. She recognised that there was a different way, and using that quality of patience as her guide, she did something quite different. Her children were stunned. They were like, Mum, what's just happened? She felt different too. She felt felt a bit of a sense of contentment for being the person she wanted to be. For me, what happened there is perfectly illustrated or encapsulated by a quote that is attributed to Viktor Frankl. 
Viktor Frankl was an Austrian neurolo- neurologist, psychiatrist, and Holocaust survivor. And he said, Between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. Now, this is what Mary had done. She'd caught herself in between that stimulus and response and recognised that space and chosen to do something different with her kids by exercising that or expressing that quality of patience. Now, let's apply this idea to a tricky work relationship that you might like to have a go at improving. Now, if you can, just take a moment to bring the person to mind. And notice, are there any thoughts or emotions that pop up for you when you think about this person? In this relationship, think about what you control. Ignoring any hierarchies, essentially in human relationships, all we control is our own behaviour. So I'm going to introduce four short stages in thinking about this relationship. You could try writing these down, and there's a handy framework to support you in doing this over on my blog at rossmackintosh.co.uk. I'm also going to apply these four stages using an example of a work relationship of mine from years ago. Let me just tell you briefly about that. So one of my peers really annoyed me. Even their voice got on my nerves. I didn't particularly rate their ideas, and I would actively avoid them in the office, and would make excuses if they came over for a conversation. I'm not proud of this, let me be clear. I'm sharing it because I think it's easy to quickly develop a story about a colleague, which then becomes the lens through which you view all the interactions with them. So let me introduce the four stages. Stage one, how do you want to be? Thinking about this relationship, how would you like to be? What are the qualities that mean something to you that you would like to express in your behaviour? For example, in my case, I chose the qualities of being open, patient and considerate. Stage two, how could you express these qualities in your behaviour? And as ever, my top tip here is keep them small. In my example, I decided I could ask them a question about a piece of work and actually listen to their response. I could say good morning to them, or I could offer to make them a cup of tea. We call these towards moves, where we're moving towards who we choose to be. Stage three. What do you do that takes you away from expressing these desired qualities? What I do is ignore the person, discount their contribution, or perhaps be a bit sarcastic about them. We call these away moves. We're moving away from who we want to be in that relationship. So just take a moment to think about your own away moves. What do you do that takes you away from expressing those qualities? Stage four. What shows up inside that makes it difficult to express these qualities? This is all about the stuff our mind produces. We've spoken about that in the previous episode, about the passengers on the bus. That was episode two, if you remember. Anyway, in my case, there were thoughts like, they are stupid, they are annoying, they don't have anything worth saying. There was also a feeling of irritation in my body. Think about the thoughts, emotions and memories that pop up for you when you think about this colleague. Often this content from our minds can hijack our behaviour and result in those away moves, those away behaviours. We're not expressing who we want to be in that relationship. Again, if it helps, you can set out your own responses to these questions using the handy framework over on my blog at rossmackintosh.co.uk. It's all about noticing what's popping up for you and seeing if you can have a go at taking some small towards moves, even when the content of our minds is clamouring for attention. It's like we're practising becoming more aware of what's going on in our minds and also our behaviour. You won't always succeed. It's important to say that. You won't always succeed in nailing those towards moves, but the important thing is that you can always reconnect with what's important and have another go at expressing those qualities. So that's about me done. So just to recap on the key takeaways from this episode. We probably all have relationships we'd like to try improving at work. In the main at work, we can only really control our own behaviour. So why not have a go at using the four stages? Stage one, think about how you want to be in the relationship. 
What qualities would you like to bring to your interactions? Stage two, how could you express these qualities in a small way in your behaviour? These are called towards moves. Stage three, what do you do that takes you away from expressing these qualities? We call these away moves. And stage four, what shows up inside that makes expressing these qualities difficult? By responding to these questions and noticing what's going on, we can increase the chances of making some towards moves. See if you can notice how it feels and if there is any response from the person or a change in the relationship. I'd love to hear how you get on. You can get in touch at peoplesoup.pod at gmail.com, on Twitter at Ross Muck Coach, and on Instagram at people.soup. You can find, subscribe and rate the podcast on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher and other podcast providers. Thanks as ever to Andy Glenn for the incidentals. Thanks to Mary for the great example of catching behaviour in flight. And thanks to Viktor Frankl for the quote attributed to him. Most of all, a sincere thank you to you for listening. I wish you a great week and bye for now.